Have you ever played the game called Blind Hit? In this game, um, an object is placed in front of you at some distance. You have to look at the object and memorize its location. Next, you are blindfolded and you are made to hit that target, I mean, that same object. Now, most of the time, people fail to hit it. And I've even seen some people wandering so close around that object and yet fails to hit the target. Have you ever wondered why it is so difficult to hit the target? The answer is uh, very simple and obvious. You cannot see the object once you are blindfolded, right? So now, imagine the life of a blind person. It's like they have to play the, this blind hit game every day. The difference is that this time, instead of a single object, there are many, many other objects. And instead of hitting the object, you have to avoid it. Now, can you imagine how difficult it is for the blind people to do that every day? So a couple of years back, I realized the difficulties that the blind faced and created something which they can use. I called it Google for Blind or G4B in short. Okay, this is how it looks like. This is one of my recent prototypes. So the game that I have described, it is uh, most of the time played, uh, played for fun and we never realize the importance of our eyes. Our eyes are a very important part of our body without which our body lives in complete darkness. Okay. So uh, the Google, uh, it's, um, I made it back in 2016 and it's working our best on the principle of echolocation used by the beds. And echolocation, so in echolocation, the bed emit ultrasound waves from their mouth or nose, and if there is any obstacles uh, in front of the bed, it gets deflected and the bed hears the echo. And their brain analyzes the echo and gets the idea of the obstacles or the object ahead. Using the same principle, I designed the Google. Uh, there is ultrasound sensors, and then uh, if the ultrasound sensor emits ultrasound wave, and if there is any object within the range of the ultrasound sensor, the sensor detects it, and the onboard microcontroller, it um, analyzes the echo, and then gets the idea of the obstacles. So, it's like uh, a mini radar pitted on a Google, right? So, now you might be wondering, why Google? I mean, like, you could make something else beside Google. Um, so uh, the reason is that you might have noticed that almost every blind person is wearing some kind of black goggles, even though they can't see through it. They wear it um, some wear it to cover their injured eyes, and some wear it uh, to let others know that they are blind. My approach is very simple. Why not put in some modern electronics in the same thing that they are wearing, which would actually help them in real life? So uh, I've integrated um, like all the electronics inside the Google itself. So this time, uh, the Google, instead of sitting on the face idly, it's helping the blind people. And uh, I'm planning to bring the Google in the market at minimum, of course, so that every blind person can afford it. So there's an interesting story behind the making of this device. It, is, it started uh, way back in 2016, December 2016, with this as my first prototype. And after that, I ma made several other prototypes and tested them, tested them in different conditions. And uh, some of my recent prototypes uh, were even tested with a real blind person. So let's take a look at the video. So in this first portion of the video, um, you can see the various situations where the cane stick fails to detect the obstacles. Now we try it uh, using G4B. And please enjoy the backgrounds as well. That's how um, our flash are. I mean, don't they get distracted by the fix and all. And G4B is also capable of detecting very tiny objects like the rope or sticks, uh, which otherwise, uh, otherwise might trip the neck uh, of a 
blind person. Um, it also gives the wearer the idea of the direction of the obstacles, which way like, the obstacles is lying. And also like uh, the idea of the distance of the obstacles. And next we try it uh, by removing, I mean taking the cane stick away from the blind and uh, the blind just using the G4B is navigating around. We also put some uh, real life situations like some people might suddenly come in front of a blind person or uh, sometimes an obstacles might come by suddenly. And as you can see, uh, he's able to detect even the sudden movements and then uh, like the everyday occurring uh, situations. Now, okay, thank you. Now, G4B, it's not made to substitute the cane stick. In fact, it is made to work uh, uh, along with the cane stick and overcome all the disadvantages that the cane sticks have. So, um, um, we're in prototype phase right now and we're planning to bring the product in the market, like I've said earlier, at minimum of the cost so that even the forest, uh, poor blind people, they can afford it. So there's a story, interesting sto story behind the making of this device, which uh, starts way back in 2016. And I met this woman. Um, this photo is taken two years after I first met her. So uh, in back in summer of 2016, I was going back home from a nearby town on a tempo, and she was sitting right next to me, of course, wearing a goggle. And uh, I didn't realize she was blind until she asked me for a direction, like whether we, whether we have reached that certain place or not. I turned and then I realized that she is blind, and I said, uh, we haven't reached yet, but uh, I'll let her know uh, once we have reached. And uh, after a while, she got down, and I also got down on the next stop. And while walking back home, I started thinking about the life of a blind person. I put myself in their shoes and realized like, all the difficulties they might be facing, especially while navigating around the environment, all the obstacles, like those things which are very common to us. Like if there is an electric pole, we don't even realize that's a problem for us. We just walk past by it. Or if there's some signboard. But for blind people, just like I've said in earlier, um, there's a game like blind have to avoid this time, right? So for the blind people, it's really difficult. Like unless that thing is making some noise, they really don't have any idea that there is something ahead. So I realized their uh, difficulties, and then I, I I I thought I should make something for them, and that's where I shifted gears, and like I started making things on the interest of others. Like I had been making things. Uh, since my early childhood, like um, some projects or models or designs, most of them were made on my own interest. Until I met this woman and then I started, uh, like I, I thought how can I use my knowledge to help others, especially the one with the dis disabilities. And, uh, <laughs> this is the first step I took after I realized, um, realized about their difficulties. And then um, my journey has just started, and there's more to come. And as I move along, I want to take others along. As there is saying, if you want to travel past, travel alone. If you want to travel far, travel together. Thank you.